I would never hire Elon Musk. I would never have hired Steve Jobs. You have to know yourself uh, to be able to hire good people and to be able to create a good company. Your social capital is something you should always be thinking about. If you're not involved at every step of the way as the CEO, uh, you're just not going to get the, the right kinds of people. Primarily, they don't work for the company. They work for your vision. They work for themselves. They work for you. If there's somebody who's better than you at doing that and getting that done, let them do it. Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. And for those of you who haven't known me yet, uh, I am Ruby Nguyen, uh, currently the CEO and co-founder at Curious. And uh, I am kind of an accidental podcast host uh, from last year since I started Vietnam Innovators. Now I'm hosting People People 2032. This is my new favorite show. So thank you for joining us today. Um, it's one of the best ways to spend, to spend a Saturday morning, uh, at least in my opinion. Um, and a little bit about People, People 2032 is a series about the future of HR and the future of work. Um, we feature thought leadership from world-class HR experts and business leaders combined with Vietnam Insight to elevate Vietnam's businesses and people to the next level. And the series is co-produced by Vietfest and Curious. And the other team are here, and uh, some of you have known MC Quoc Khanh, who's uh, the boss behind this. Uh, they are one of the leading media companies in Vietnam for high quality edutainment content for businesses and professionals. And a little bit more about Curious as well. Uh, we are a professional network focused on learning and development, where you can exchange on the job learning instantly create a super cool profile and build a high quality network that helps you grow continuously for successful, meaningful career. And that's it about um, Curious and about us. Now it's about what we're here for. Uh, and today's topic is about hiring superstar talent. And no one else is better qualified to talk about this than today's speaker, Brian Held. He's a superstar himself, a superstar entrepreneur, uh, and we are very lucky to have him with us today. Um, Brian is an extraordinary and visionary entrepreneur. I've, I'm a big fan of, of Brian. And to be honest, I'm a big fan of all the speaker invites to this series, but I'm an extra fan of Brian. So don't tell other speakers. Uh, Brian has built 12 companies that I've known of. He might have some other companies that he's never talked about um, in the last 20 years, no, 24 years, uh, including VMG, the very first unicorn of Vietnam, he has some IPO, uh, he has a company with an IPO and he has many other successful exits. I'm so honored and so thrilled to have him with us today. And without further ado, I would like to pass the stage back to Brian. Let's hear from Brian and his amazing keynote coming up right now. Thank you very much, Ruby. Uh, no pressure at all. Uh, by the way, Ruby, uh, I'm a huge fan of yours, and I look forward to one day, perhaps in the future, working for you or uh, working with you. I'm honored. Uh, we, we're open for you to join the team. <laughs> we we well, don't have I'm a position, kinda, but I'm going to open a position just for you. I'm kind of busy right now. I've got my own thing going on right now, uh, but, uh, but thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I guess I'm going to start my deck. Is that okay? All so right. Brian has a special presentation for us. I it's very a... rare to, to see him presenting with a PowerPoint. But we I are very lucky. I don't present very well. Uh, I am not a PowerPoint person, but I'm going to try to 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 wade my way through this here. I This is all about hiring superstars. And this is a few lessons that I've learned the very difficult, hard way. Um, first of all, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about myself. Um, I started off as a software engineer and I still code. I was a sociology major at UCLA. Um, me personally, my style uh, as an entrepreneur is I am a forest and the trees guy. I like the details and I like the big picture equally. And I don't feel comfortable unless I feel like I understand them both. 
I like to uh, see things uh, long term. Uh, I like to be early uh, in a field. Uh, that's just the kind of thing that I do. Um, I'm I try to do uh, my focus is on high scale potential startups with a meaningful mission. Um, I, I try to be as early as possible, but not so early that I fall into some sort of a chasm. I have experience in multiple countries. Uh, my first one was Nomad.fr, which was a web portal in France um, in the mid-90s, 1995, actually, is when I started that. That went public. Uh, I did Fetch Technologies, which is a, an artificial intelligence startup in, um, in the late 90s in the United States, back when there weren't that many AI startups. I helped... The, in the very early days of FPT software, um, which I think had a couple hundred people then and has about 30,000 now, FPT Media, uh, and I'm on the, I was on the board for many years, FPT Media as well. I was the founding CEO of uh, VNG right from the very beginning uh, and uh, helped to grow that company. Uh, I'm still an active board member there. I was on the board of Vietnam Works for many years as well. I helped uh, inside VNG, I helped start Zing, I started another company that did virtual item sales uh, called Stab Studios. I uh, was involved with media, uh, uh, Inspirato Media. I did an AI company uh, called Peak AI, which I was on the board of and um, uh, helped sell that to uh, Momo recently. Uh, I am currently on the board of uh, Pizza 4Ps, uh, also Heart of Darkness uh, Brewery, uh, where it's a, which is in 11 countries. And I'm an advisor to um, Ascend Ventures Vietnam. I'm currently doing an augmented reality startup. This is what I'm focusing. I'm working on this about 60 hours a week right now. Um, I have a team in Saigon and a team that's distributed around the world uh, as well. And uh, I, I can't say a lot about it, but it's going to be really cool. Augmented reality is where a lot of things are happening uh, in the future. Apple should be releasing augmented reality glasses sometime next year, perhaps. And um, uh, I'm building a um, an experience uh, that will basically it's an application that's going to run on top of of that platform. So I'm I'm uh, the glasses that I'm wearing, the crazy glasses that I'm wearing uh, in the photo there are augmented reality glasses. Uh, they already exist and uh, they're in their early st stages right now. But uh, 10 years from now, you won't be using a phone. You'll be actually uh, just wearing glasses. And so uh, uh, that's going to start next year. Um, and Bootloader Studio is hiring, just by the way. Uh, fun fact, um, we're in Vietnam. The lower left-hand corner of your keyboard has the letter Z. And um, um, I, I tried to do what I could to re-interject the letter Z into Vietnam because I... I named Zing, uh, Z-I-N-G, because I wanted to uh, help protect uh, our trademarks at VNG. And then we ended up using Zalo, the another Z. So uh, I, I tried very hard to popularize the letter Z for, for, for Vietnamese people. That's kind of a fun fact here. Let me go on. It's good to talk, to talk about superstars. and um, But it's a long word, and I'm just going to call them A's. Uh, you have A's, you got B's, you got C's, you got D's. Uh, and I'm just going to call them A's because superstars are really uh, uh, A's with a oversized uh, reputation. And uh, I don't think we need to be intimidated by A's. I think that uh, they are uh, attainable for a lot of people. Um, you can hire them for your company. You don't need to think of them as superstars, but you should probably treat them as superstars. What I'm going to share today are a few important perspectives that help me motivate hire and train A's. Okay, so I'm just going to go through, and I think I've got six of them, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, let's go. First of all, very important to know yourself. I think as an entrepreneur, this is um, something that I always tell everybody. It's like, you have to know yourself uh, to be able to hire good people and to be able to create a good company. You have to know where your weaknesses are, what your insecurities are, uh, and you have to be able to deal with them. Make sure that your commitment to your mission is number one. You have to kind of get out of the way. If I've got weaknesses, I'm going to hire somebody to uh, compensate for my weaknesses. And uh, ultimately, at some point, a lot of these people, there's a lot of opportunities for insecurities. 
a lot of these people are going to be better than I am at what I at what they do. Um, I hope that actually most everybody who works for me in that area that they work for me is going to be way better at doing that than I am. My job is to actually go and coordinate and uh, and keep everybody going on the mission and the vision. Uh, but uh, in order to be able to do all that, you have to know yourself. If you don't really know yourself, if you don't know your weaknesses, if you're too insecure, uh, you're probably not going to hire. You're not even going to want to hire uh, people who are better than yourself. And that's a fatal flaw for a uh, for any startup uh, uh, person. So knowing yourself, super important. Another one, develop your social capital. Now, this is what I'm going to talk about for a little bit. Um Social capital is a concept that's used a lot in sociology and a lot of and a lot of other fields as well. It's a little bit complicated, so bear with me here for a second. So social capital for me is three things that have to work together and you have to maximize all three. So number one is you have a social graph. Social graph is like if you think about like uh, you're on Facebook, right? You have your friends list. That's kind of your social graph. Your address book on your phone, that's your social graph. You have all these connections. Uh, to other people. If you're social, if you know a lot of people that have uh, resources or they actually have something to offer, right? I mean, I have some people on my social graph that I hang out with, but you know, they're they're not necessarily people that um, uh, have skills that relate to my startups, for example, right? Uh, or they may not have uh, the resources to participate in a startup. So what I'm what I do is is that uh, you have to think about all the connections that you have. And then the third thing, which is the thing that ties it all together, is uh, what is your propensity to um, cooperate towards mutually beneficial goals? If I know people and I just say, oh yeah, I know this guy or I know this, this woman, and but they're not going to cooperate with me to for a mutually beneficial goal, then that connection is not really worth very much. They could have massive amounts of wealth, or they could have massive amounts of power, or they could have uh, lots of incredible talent. But um, if they don't want to cooperate with me uh, towards a mutually beneficial goal, then I still have low so, uh, social capital. I have to have all three. It's never just enough to have a, uh, have a connection. Uh, it's never enough to have a connection that is of somebody who's important, but it's like, if they want to cooperate with you, then you have social capital, if you have all three. So uh, you have to think about it that way. And um, part of doing that is, is that you have to build your, your reputation all continually as an entrepreneur. As an entrepreneur, I consider this to be my career. I do multiple startups in my life. I'm, I'm gonna still, I still have another startup or two in me. Uh, and I'm always concerned about what's going to happen next. Um, so my my long term reputation makes it easier for me to do business with great people. So that's really important. Your social capital is something you should always be thinking about. Uh, you should always be trying to maximize the the people that you know and identifying the people that you think might be able to help you. The, those are the people that have the abilities that you need and um, make sure that, that, uh, and you're doing well, if they're going to cooperate with you. Okay. So that's uh, social capital, three things that you really need to focus on a lot to be able to get uh, the really highly talented people that you want to get. Another thing, this is a uh, third thing. A's can hire A's, but B's cannot. You can never delegate recruitment of A's. It's impossible to, de to, to delegate that to anybody else. The top person in the company has to be uh, on board to spend a lot of their time recruiting other A's. If you are here and you're listening to this and or watching this and you are in a company and you're not the CEO and the CEO is not an A, then you will never have any A's in your company. End of story. So uh, I would suggest that you quit right now and uh, go to work for a different company that has an A as a CEO, uh, then you're going to be able to work with a lot of really great people uh, if you can do that. So, um, uh, but A's can hire A's, B's cannot hire A's. It is just impossible. Um, if somehow they trick an A into joining, uh, 
the the A will quit very quickly afterwards because you can't retain an A unless you're an A. That's another kind of version of the same thing. But um, uh, it is really important to understand that. I think a lot of people, a lot of companies, there's kind of a culture uh, in a lot of places of um, delegating recruitment and other things to HR and uh, or or to delegating it to a recruiter. If you're not involved uh, uh, at every step of the way as the CEO, uh, you're just not going to get the the right kinds of people. I prob- I personally spend at least 25% of my time uh, right now uh, in recruitment and and bringing people on board. So I do I work with recruiters? Of course I do. Uh, do I have a great HR person? Yeah. Uh, Do I work with her? Yeah, uh, of course I do. But they're in a supporting role for what we do. Think of uh, recruiters and HR people as wedding photographers. If you've ever been married, uh, the wedding photographer tries to control everything. And it kind of messes up the event, actually. (laughs) Um, You have to, you as the leader have to uh, be the one in the driver's seat driving things forward. You have to understand what uh, your business issues are, what you have to compensate for. You have to know yourself, identify the kinds of people that you need to uh, to recruit. And then, uh, only then, uh, is it possible if you're in the driver's seat and you're using these people as resources to help you uh, do a better job uh, reaching the top people, then that's that's a, that's great. That's a, that's the proper usage for it. You can't just say to recruitment, you know what, I need somebody and then give me a list of people and and can you contact them first for me? That's not going to work. It's really not going to work. Um, uh, it's a waste of time and uh, you will fail. And you're only going to get Bs if you're an A. Uh, if you're a B, you're only going to get Cs. And if you're getting Ds, what are you doing? So um, uh, in a startup, I only do As and Bs. I never do any Cs or Ds. Uh, if you, As you scale up, you might have to backfill with some Cs later on as you get extreme levels of scale. But at the beginning, you want you, you want to try to get As, right? Primarily, they don't work for the company. They work for your vision. They work for themselves. They work for you. Does your boss want you to be the best employee that you can possibly be? People who have failed big in public ways are forced to confront themselves. So I like people like that, and I like to hire people like that. Very important fact. A's are humans. I always hate to think of a person as a human resource. They're a human being. Let me talk about a little bit about that. They're biological beings. And this is going to get really weird. Uh, some people kind of think it's very strange that well, what I'm about to say. But when I look at somebody, especially who's an A, and I'm paying attention, I think of this person as having three things. They have a cerebral cortex. A cerebral cortex is the thing that human beings have a lot of that. This is where we have logic. We can we have our sense of identity. We have our sense of, uh, of you know personhood. Um, the cerebral cortex is uh, if if somebody has a cerebral cortex, and we all do, uh, we are able to have logical thought. For example, um, and I look for people uh, that have high functioning brains. Uh, that that. <laughs> Well, I mean, you got to think of them as people, right? So I think of them biologically as well as everything else. But they have a high-functioning brain. They don't commit a lot of logical fallacies, uh, meaning that they are clear thinkers and they are flexible thinkers. And they are able to exchange ideas with other people on the team. And uh, they are able to communicate. That's the cerebral cortex helps you do all that. The limbic system is something else. The limbic system is the primitive part of your brain. And the limbic system is something that we all have, and it's also very important. we It's the seat of all the emotions. It's the seat of things like your insecurities. It's the seat of a lot of your drives as well. Um, so that's the primitive part of your brain. But I look for people that have healthy, well-adjusted limbic systems. 
<laughs> I look for people that are at peace with themselves and at peace with the world around them. They might be ha have some strong drives, but these are people that are not going to be, uh, let's say, I'm trying not to use any bad words here. I don't hire jerks. Um, I, I hire people that, that can work as a team. So I'm looking at people that, uh, that have a healthy limbic system. They have healthy, well-adjusted, uh, emotions. Um, then I look for people that have experience. So a lot of people, when they just recruit people, they just look at the resume and they go, okay, oh, look at the experience that these people have. Um, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, and then you kind of infer from that, that, uh, they might be, pretty high functioning brain, uh, you know, but when you meet them, you have to, to identify, are they well adjusted? Are they, uh, did they seem to be relatively happy? Do they seem to, uh, uh, be able to get along with other people? Um, your experience in your past impacts both your limbic system and your cerebral cortex. You learn things, you learn rational things with your cerebral cortex, but your limbic system also learns from your experience. And sometimes, you know, like when you have a, 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 a bad relationship and then the next relationship, you start treating that person kind of the same way that you treated the other person. Cause you think that's going to, everything is going to happen again. Somehow you're not thinking that you're feeling that. And, um, and, and so I think people that, uh, so, so your experience will actually determine what your, what your limbic system does. So I think of it, I think of people that way. They're human beings, they're biological beings. We have experience. Sometimes we have emotions associated with that experience. Sometimes we have lessons learned from that experience. All of these things are very important. So I look for people that are happy, well-adjusted, people who have um, uh, great experience, who have learned from it. And uh, I look for all three in the right way. Whoa, this is gonna be, this is a very interesting slide. A's will not work for your company. Then, well, Brian, well, why is it that we're here if A's are not going to work for your company? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, actually, turns out that A's won't work for your company. They have priorities. They might, if you're able to convince them, they will work for your vision. They are not going to work for a company. It is a waste of time if you're an A to work for a company. You're going to work for a vision. You're also going to work for yourself as an A, because I am constantly developing myself. And I and, and if this company is, is a place where I feel like I can grow or I can get more experience and, and so forth, then I'm going to like that. My limbic system is going to be happy. If I'm an A, I might work for you if you're the boss, because I'm convinced that you are kind of the like the embodiment of, of that vision, right? You're the carrier of that vision and that mission. And so I might work for you as well. Uh, and then lastly, I mean, because it, you only want to hire professional A's, they will work for the company, actually. They will take one for the team. They're going to do all the right things uh, to, to help uh, further the mission and vision of the company. But if you think about it, if you really break it down, they don't, primarily, they don't work for the company. They work for your vision. They work for themselves. They work for you. Um, when I, at, when somebody in my company asked, why are you, where, why did you join bootloader studio? And it was, it was, I was shocked. It was kind of embarrassed, but it was like, but people were like the vision and I want to work for Brian. Um, it, it, it was a key thing. It was a key thing for people. Um, and so don't just think that people are going to work for your company. Okay. There's, there's just going to be other priorities that are going to be involved there. Um, and with A's, uh, because they are so inwardly uh, motivated and not outwardly directed, you have to work with that. A's, only A's. I think you get, you get below A's, you get below B's. You definitely, they should be working for the company. They should be doing all those things. But, 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 but A's are, are, are a bit different in this regard. I think we're getting close to the, the, the end of this, which is do your homework. A's definitely will do their homework. So, um, you're hunting for the best of the best. And if you're trying to find people, you need to be prepared, okay? I do lots of homework when I'm trying to 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 uh get somebody for my company. I do a lot of you know, homework. I will memorize their CV. I will uh so when I go into an interview, I don't have to look at anything. I have memorized cold. I know all of their experience. 
I know uh, what they've said. I've looked at their, I've tried to look at some references. I, I never ask them to tell me about anything that I've already read, right? I'm going to ask them questions because I've already digested that and I have uh, internalized everything. Um, really important to be really freaking prepared. If I can find social media, I'll find social media. I'm going to look at the things that they're interested in. I want to understand about this person as a human being as well. Um, A's are really specific that way. I think it's very helpful to understand as much as possible. You know, you're playing a, a long game. And another way of putting it is, is that you don't, you're not just targeting, you're attracting them. So, um, as I said before, with, uh, uh, talking about social capital, you're always building your, um, your reputation and, uh, and, and you're also building your company's reputation as well. A's will take a look. They're going to research. They're very careful with what their next step is in their career, and they're very selective. So you're going to have to be able to attract them as well. It's not just about you hunting them down and finding them and laser sharp focus and convincing them to, to join you. It, you have to have done a lot of work before that to make your company an attractive company, a good place to work and a place that's got a meaningful vision that uh, that people who are highly self-actualized will still want to join you. Yes, of course, do your homework, be prepared, hunt them down, but make sure that they're they're going to be attracted to you at the same time. That's it. That's my awesome. little big a big round of applause. It's just me applauding because everyone else is on mute. But uh, this is amazing. Thank you so much, Brian. It's Thank such you. an insightful Thank you. and highly entertaining uh, speech. One of the best I've heard so far. Yeah. Thank you so um, much. We have a bunch of questions coming to you from me, prepared for you before today. And then we have other questions from our audience today as well. Okay. But first thing first, a bunch of uh, a bunch of people in the audience want to know how can I know that I am an A? <laughs> and uh, a related questions to that uh, asked by Chung and Ching: How can I know that the CEO I'm working for is an A? I I kind of figured out that the, I thought that that would probably generate some questions. Yeah. Yeah. That we all have weaknesses, right? I like I, I like people who have uh, a certain amount of um, of radical uh, uh, humility about their abilities. Um, only then, if you're like really deeply aware of what you don't know, can you be can you be humble and can you actually uh, have the energy and motivation to learn? I'm constantly um, concerned <laughs> with my deficits, uh, <laughs> so. Um, it's interesting. I think in the, this day and age, a lot of people think that they're A's and they're not. Uh, and how do you tell if you're really an A? Well, at some point, it might take a very long time, but then other people will convince you that you're an A. If you have other, a lot of other people convincing you that you're an A, then you might believe it at some point. Uh, that's an outwardly directed one. Inward is really tough because a lot of people, it's very easy for to for you to have an overinflated opinion of yourself. And um uh, a lot of people who are not very well adjusted have a very high opinion of themselves. Uh, these would be the uh, <clears throat> the jerks, for example. The jerks might have a highly developed cerebral cortex. They might have great capabilities of doing things, uh, but their their uh, their brain is like their their motivations are pretty twisted, right? Actually, just Brian, I just want to recap for the audience benefit. How do you know you and I, right? Mm -hmm. So inwardly and outwardly. Outwardly, there are a lot of people mm -hmm. appreciating you or acknowledge that you are an A. Mm -hmm. And then you're convinced somehow. And then inwardly, you might feel that you're an A, but because of your humility, sometimes you don't feel that way. Is that right? Yeah. Well, then I would say you have a limbic system issue <laughs> 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 because you have some deep insecurities and you're not able to uh, uh, realize. To your... internalize. A lot of people have this problem. They have uh, imposter syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. Agree. Um, I, that's why I think that's why the first slide I had there was about know yourself. I mean, mm. really self-knowledge is very important. It's not an easy thing. And, um, you know, Different kinds of entrepreneurs are different. Um, uh, there's people that are entrepreneurs who are successful when they're really young. They don't know themselves. They just cannot know themselves. 
and they don't know how they fit into the universe. They don't know anything about that kind of stuff. I mean, it's extremely rare. Um, uh, as you get older, it's more possible for you to, uh, to, to know about yourself and to know what, you know, what's going on, uh, and, uh, where your weaknesses really are. I like people that have had big failures in their lives. Hmm. I like people that have have failed at companies. I like people that have uh, failed at a, I mean, even a marriage or or you know relationships or um, people who have failed big in public ways are forced to confront themselves and to to realize that they're not going to be able to present a facade. They're not be able to be imposters uh, 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 because they've eliminated that option from themselves because they failed publicly. Uh, and as an entrepreneur, it's a key thing as well. So I like people like that. And I like to hire people like that. Me too. Mm -hmm. Me too. Whoever here have uh, big fellows in your life and have thought about it a lot, contemplated a lot. I would mm -hmm. love to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, the second part of the question is how do I know I'm working for an A? Does your boss want you to be the best person the best employee that you can possibly be mm. the most self-actualized person that you can possibly mm. be do they do they root for your success mm. um then if that's the if if they if the answer is yes then they can it's quite possible they could be an a um if they are trying to keep you down <laughs> if they're trying to be like ah, you know uh, if they're not doing that uh then you know My, my I love how, how, how that question turned out. It's, it's great. It's so good to hear that, even though you kind of answer it indirectly <laughs> and trying to save people's quitting the job right here. <laughs> um, that's beautiful. Perfect. I would never hire Elon Musk. I would never have hired Steve Jobs. If you're not engaged during your reference checks and your interviews, uh, you're going to have a problem and you're gonna, these people are going to sneak in. Jerks who are really brilliant, but super selfish and abuse other people in the workplace, there's just no room for them. Now, the next question come from uh, a little bit of um, insecurity, I guess. Mm -hmm. Let's say, Brian, you are still you, right? And in a parallel universe, you're still mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. But you don't have all the track record of, you know, being the amazing entrepreneur you are today. You didn't have that unicorn or that IPO or that uh, 1100 exits that you have not had. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're still you. Mm -hmm. Would you say that you would be able to still hire ace and superstars to join your company? When you're starting a company, uh, it's an act of reality creation. You are. Um, You start off with a, an idea and a vision, <clears throat> and your job is to start to make it more real over time. Um, so every time you do a company, you're doing that. And then with yourself as your career, you have to do the same thing as well, right? Uh, you're building your reputation over time. Now, if you don't have a lot of external uh, references for your, for your uh, reputation, like what you were just talking about, then uh, it's going to be um, more difficult to do than if you have that, of course, right? I consider that like, I mean, I've been collecting people for a long time, uh, collecting awesome people for a long time. And not, not just collecting, I collect in my head, they may not work for me, they may not work with me, they may not work, you know, but, 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 Over time, like we keep in touch and we keep in touch and, you know, you never know. Eventually, maybe we're going to work together. Like you, Ruby, maybe eventually we'll work together at some point. Yes. If I fail uh, my startup, I'll go and work for you. <laughs> or, or I'll work for you. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm happy to do that too. You have to build that over time. And 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 if you don't have it at the beginning, then uh, people can see the, the your raw intelligence, the cerebral cortex. You know, they can see that you're well adjusted and, you know, that you're happy that you Uh, can the, you know, and A's will sense you can sense that, but it's going to be more of a convincing that you're going to have to do. Oh, mm -hmm. by the way, I love your concept of collecting people, <laughs> and I, I think I have this gut feeling of doing that from a while ago. But last year, when you mentioned this, mm -hmm. I started to do this seriously. I have a spreadsheet for this. Uh, 
Yeah, I do. I, I, do. I have a spreadsheet have a, as well. Yeah, yeah I, I have a spreadsheet for this, and uh, I have notes of people I meet. Uh, there's like hundreds of notes that I have just to make sure that I don't forget about them. Because yeah. nowadays, on your Facebook and LinkedIn, you have thousands of people there, and you sure. might forget them. Um, yeah, I love that concept. So it's a great, it's a great, uh, it's a, that's a great technique to keep a list of uh, yeah. potentials uh, that you you might want to work with. Yeah, mm -hmm. in the future, I I hate just you know. We get, <clears throat> We're always so busy right now, and things just go in, you know, into our attention and then out. Uh, it's helpful to keep lists like that. Mm -hmm. And some of them, maybe today, uh, you're not going to be able to hire them or to get right. them to work for you. But down the road, you never know. And yeah. the interesting thing about this is, when you talk to A's, right, you also start to develop your judgment about who is an A or not. Yeah. So. Just talking to them, <laughs> develop that instinct to 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 differentiate between A's and the rest. I found that A's are some of the easiest people in the world to talk to because they're they're so clear, they're smart, they're clear, they can communicate, and uh, they uh, they're the some of the easiest people to talk to about stuff. And when I talk to an A, a serious A, I am energized. And I get it's energy generative, not energy depletive, you know, for me. So um, I, I think about a lot of things. Like I think about how I spend my time, who I spend my time with about in terms of, is it energy generative? Do I get more energy from the, having that experience or is it energy depletive? Do I lose energy uh, by that experience? Uh, actually, that's a good item on the checklist. <clears throat> Yeah, but A's yeah, are- And you feel energy. intellectually stimulated as well, right? Yeah, 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 <clears throat> yeah. You want A's that'll be intellectually stimulating and can get stuff done. <laughs> True that. Yeah. True yeah. that. Um, Brian, you mentioned about the brilliant jerks earlier. Yeah. How do you filter out these people during your interview process or filtering process? And have you hired someone like that before? How do oh, you yeah. It? Oh, my goodness. I mean, I, I hired one one time that, um, that almost shipwrecked the company, you know, uh, I mean, this is why Tell I like, more. like no, I, yeah, I, I can't, that's, here. that's an HR related issue. And I, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to uh, expose any identifiable, uh, you know, information for that, you know, of that person, but just let us know how you deal with a uh, brilliant jokes and oh, fire them quickly, <laughs> <laughs> fire them quickly. Okay. You can't okay. fire them too, too quickly. <laughs> um, just fire really quickly. All hire right. quickly. Yeah. I hire, hire, uh, relatively slowly and then hire quickly. I fire and then how do you filter them out um, during the process of um, interviewing? Because they might look like real A's, right? How do you yeah. know that they are not real A's? Well, something there's something called reference checks that is not very <laughs> very often done in Vietnam. Uh, you <laughs> surprisingly, I mean, it's like standard operating procedure in a lot of places, and Vietnam tends to do a little bit less um, on average. Of course, different people are different. Uh, but, but yeah, I references, I mean, you're going to get, you're always going to get con conflicting data on people, uh, yes. for reference checks. You're always going to do that. And, uh, um, but, but if you're not engaged during your reference checks and your interviews, uh, you're going to have a problem and then you're going to, these people are going to sneak in, but if you're smart and you're, you're, you're engaged during your reference checks and your, and your interviews, uh, then you're going to be able to, to figure out some of these things, right? Uh, hmm. It's hard when you're really young. You don't have a lot of experience, and as you get more experience, it becomes a little bit easier to to to. If it's something that you focus on, that's a skill that you have to develop over time. I guess uh, when you have experience dealing with a lot of brilliant jokes, then you know how to realize the jokes. Yeah, <laughs> is, is mean, that what you mean by having experience? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one, one. That's one thing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know. Um, in the early days of a startup, and again, I'm a startup entrepreneur. I, you know, I don't, I'm not like, I'm not a big company kind of guy. When you're hiring people, you want people who are like really intellectually flexible and who can work together as a team and who believe in your vision. And um, so what you don't want is uh, some person that you have to put in a room isolated that's going to get some serious work done and you have to slip them a pizza now and then uh, from pizza for peace. Um, and, uh, you know, <laughs> thanks for the advertisement. <laughs> and, and you, you, you know, you have to slip them a pizza now and then, uh, you know, just, just 
just manage them over there and they're not going to integrate with the team very well. That's really tough on the team. Now, at some point, you know, as you get more scale and the, the, the company becomes larger, there is more of a role for these really solo executors. But I still think that, that, you know, like um, um, people who, uh, for example, jerks who are really brilliant, but super selfish and, uh, um, uh, abuse other people in the workplace, there's just no room for them. I would never hire Elon Musk. I would never have hired Steve Jobs ever. Uh, because oh, yeah. So th- these people on that, people, why? The closer you get to people like that, the more they don't like those people, right? Mm. And, uh, and think that they're very difficult. And they might admire them, of course. Um, and they might feel like they, they can still have success with them. But they they really don't like them, and they they actually do lots of bad things to people around them. Um, of course, they're very driven and so forth. So they're the further away you get from them, the more impressive they look. Ah, I see. And so uh, and so I I don't like that actually. I like I like people that I I like working with people. The more the closer you get to them, the more impressed you are. Oh my goodness, that's 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 amazing uh, when yeah. you have people like that. And you know you know you can still build a billion dollar company. Um, without jerks. All yeah. right. Next question is from Ella. And I would love to hear from Ella. And she's on the panel. Thank you, Ella, Ruby. You can, yes, yes, you can open your mic now. Hey, and thank you for bringing Brian here uh, to us uh, today. Uh, and Brian, I think you're the best person in Vietnam or you know, maybe even globally to answer this question as a zero oh. entrepreneur. All right. So it's it a out. very simple question, but I think is uh, is the question that most entrepreneurs uh, have to have in their mind uh, from the early days, or you know, like at some point, mm-hmm. uh, that is to hire someone to eventually uh, can replace ourselves. Perfect. Even in yeah, even in the hiring uh, process, right? Hiring those A's that you mentioned. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, do you have any rule of thumbs or any tips or any thought process when it comes to hiring for, uh, you know, uh, for someone who can replace you one day so you can move on to do the next big thing? Yeah. Um, yeah so succession plan. Ella, what is the next big thing you're working on? <laughs> um, well, right now is still a secret. Um, I'm still focused on this big thing. So okay. I don't want to yeah, think about it too much. But uh, yeah, it has but to be. You're planning for it already. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm developing some seat here. Well, yeah, awesome. yeah I mean, you're, uh, if you're a serial entrepreneur, then there's always going to be the next thing, right? Um, so, yeah, that's, I look forward to seeing, uh, following your career for the decades to come, Ella. Succession planning and uh, finding a replacement for yourself. Um, you know, when, when the first startup that you do, your ego will be enmeshed with that startup. It's like the people, like it's the same. Your startup is you, you are your startup. And somebody says something bad about your service or your product. They're saying something bad about you and you feel <gasps> it stings, it hurts. Um, somebody says something good about your product or your company that you feel so great, right? Because um, it's about you, but it's not about you. I mean, come on, it's a team thing. Uh, there's so many things like you, you, as you uh, like when you have a child and you have your first child, you know, your first child is like, oh my gosh, you have to be so careful about everything and they have to get it all right. And then, you know, when you've had 12 children, you know, there's like, I'm a perfect, you know, it's just chill out a little bit about these things. And, you know, you, you look at your, I look at my startups like kids and like my kids have grown up and they're, they're some of them, have, some of them crashed and burned. Some of them have, have, uh, uh, you know, gone off to college. They are like very impressive and they, you know, they're wonderful. And, you know, you have to have that kind of a, of, of a, it's, it's hard because you have to have a little bit of a detachment from it. Right. Um, and in order to be able to find a successor for yourself, like, you have to have that. And uh, you realize that your company has its own, it, it still has the vision, it still has the mission, and it has its own destiny that is separate from you as a human being. And so if there's somebody who's better than you at doing that and getting that done, let them do it. 
and you're still a major shareholder and you're going to ride with them and you're going to have more of a life <laughs> at the same time. So it's a good thing to find somebody who's to be a replacement for yourself. It's a wonderful thing. Ella, does it answer your question? Do you have any follow-up? But how? <laughs> But how? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so your your answer to her is let that person do it. If you find someone, let that person do it. Yeah. And her question sure is, do how do I find that person? Yeah. How do you find that person? Uh, Come back to like, the whole lecture that Brian has uh, given. You the hire whole... <laughs> A's uh, and then one of them might be that person. I mean, you know, you hire A's. Right. So you hire, hire A's and one of them might become that person. And remember, yeah. Ella, collect people. Collect people. Yeah, you'll know somebody at some point, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's amazing. Thank you so much. I feel so entertained just listen to you answering these questions. Now, the, the next one is about um, after question. hiring. Everyone. Thank you. I mean, this right. is from people too. Uh, after hiring, what are your principles in motivating and retaining your ace? Make them uh, owners, you know. They have to feel Make them owners. owners. Yeah, so um, I love the fact, you know, you... you start a company and and give people um, a well-structured, thoughtful stock option program, for example. And uh, then you end, and that's a completely different subject. I can't even get into that, even scratch the surface here. But um, you, you make them owners and uh, they can benefit from that. You need to take care of people. They're human beings. You have to take care of them. Uh, you have to provide a good work environment where they feel comfortable. You have to feel they can achieve self-actualization. They can achieve everything they want to achieve uh, career-wise with you. And you know what? And my view is, is, is they don't have to be stick with me. They don't have to stick with the company. They will, okay. I'm going to hire them when it, when it overlaps that the company, what the company needs and what they need and it all overlaps. And you know what? The company moves away and then they're still there and it doesn't fit anymore, or they move away, or, you know, and the company has a different direction, and we're going different directions, it's fine. And um, I'm, I've already collected them. And I'm gonna get them again at some point in the future. <laughs> you know, I've even fired people for good reason. And had because they're and, too good to work for you? No, no, no. And for good reason, because of a problem and work with them again. Hmm. Wow, that's amazing. So is so you have to fire people ownership. to be able to do yeah. that. So ownership is one thing, taking care of yeah. them, of course, uh, making a place where they, 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 they feel because they're very inwardly uh, uh, motivated. You have to be able to um, let them be the best that they can be in an ideal world. That's what we do with everyone else, right? We let everyone around us be the best that they can possibly be, but the best person, the best version of themselves that they can possibly be. And uh, then the world is a much better place. People who hold other people down, man, that is really messed up. Yeah. Uh, that is really messed up. I, I have no tolerance for that. I fire them. So uh, we have run out of questions. I, I know that some people here have more, have more questions. I would like to end our talk today with a kind of a high note or a summary. Let's say you have a billboard and every billboard in this earth is going to display that one right. message about hiring superstars or ace talent. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you have only one message for them to, to, to look at to get the condensed experience of Brian Pels. Oh, what man. Would that <laughs> message on the billboard? Well, the one that would be, um, I mean... Yeah, you use the billboard thing. I always talk about bumper stickers, but nobody has bumper stickers anymore. Um, it's like a, it's like a little. Every slide that you ever put in a deck should always have like one bumper sticker. I mean, it should be something that's like a half a sentence that is going to be the memorable takeaway from that, right? Mm. And, um, uh, from this, if I were to take all of those six points that I made and pick one of them, because uh, I can't abstract it even more than that, uh, it would be only A's can hire A's. Hmm. Only A's can hire A's. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. That's perfect. And thank you so much for this beautiful Saturday morning. Thank you, Ruby. This has been a very uh, enjoyable uh, Saturday morning for me. Thank you, everyone, as well. Um, it's been a lot of fun. And uh, um, if I haven't met you before, I look forward to meeting you at some point. 
Yes, and I would love to bring you back here because there's so much more we can talk about in this topic of building the future of people and talents and culture. Yeah, um, I'd love that. I'd love that. Let's uh, let's do that trip to Estonia at some point as well. We can. You know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to co- to go and collect people. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not going to take you around Vietnam to where I collect. <laughs> Gonna... I'll take myself around Vietnam. I'm okay yeah, yeah. with that. You're pretty okay, I think. I, I think you're yeah. Yeah. And uh, so before you go, everyone, I uh, just want to let you know that our next episode is going to be about talent management and talent development, right? So some of you here earlier have questions of how to develop um, BCDs to become A's, right? So that's a question that we're going to answer a part of it next time. But also remember, only A's can hire A's, like Brian said today. Mm. And uh, A's are a special type of animal, I guess. Um, but yeah, next time, we will learn about how to develop people so that they have um, that potential or that uh, uh, progress to become A's or become better in general. And before you go, remember that I do this because of Curious. And if you love me and you love this series, you got to join Curious. So go to Curious.com and uh, check it out. It's a very early version of uh, my vision of building a professional learning network for young professionals in emerging markets. It's very early, but it's good enough for us to try it out. And so give it a try and let me know uh, if you have any feedback or if you have tough criticism. I would love to hear criticism from you guys on uh, what we can do better. And also for people, people as well. Let me know what I can do better for this show. Uh, Don't tell me that bring Brian back every episode because he has other work to do. But uh, send me an email at uh, ruby at curious.com. So thank you very much. Brian, thank you so much. I love the session today. Thank you for sharing so generously. I would love to bring you back to this series when you have the time. (laughs) And uh, have a good... We can, everyone. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm.